Well, I think the main reason that Mother deserves special recognition is that she was a unique person. Bessie Lillian Gordy was born August 15, 1898, to James and Mary Ida Gordy in Richland, Georgia, a small town a few miles west of Plains. The daughter of a postmaster and a homemaker, Lillian grew up in the rural South where color and race were defining characteristics. Racial segregation was a dominant theme in the Southeast and in other parts of the country. And to treat uh, African Americans as equals was really an anomaly in society. And it was, it was frowned on by many people. Mother paid no attention to racial segregation. Lillian knew at an early age that she wanted to be a nurse, and she studied at the Wise Sanitarium in Plains and finished her education at Grady Memorial Hospital in 1923. After her graduation, Lillian married James Earl Carter, a local businessman from Plains, and raised four children while working part-time as a nurse. She also worked with her husband at Carter's Warehouse, which specialized in peanuts and cotton. She used her nursing skills to help her husband's employees and tended both black and white neighbors who needed medical care. Mother was, I'd say, their medical doctor and their nurse and their caretaker. And she was the one that protected them and their rights as they were partially abused during that separate but equal era when there was no equality about it. There was separation but no equality. My grandmama, she really and truly didn't see color. And she taught me that. I think that's one of the legacies my grandmama left me. My father died when mama was uh, in her early 60s. And so she had a long life ahead of her. She lived in, to, 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 in, be for 20 more years. And, and I, there's no doubt about it, my mother's character almost completely changed in addressing the public after my father died. Lillian served as the house mother for the Kappa Alpha fraternity at Auburn University from 1955 to 1962. And she helped run a nursing home in Blakely, Georgia. But in 1966, she made a major decision. At the age of 68, when many people were retiring from hard work, Lillian joined the Peace Corps and went to India. When she got home and we'd be eating, she'd go, don't leave that food on your plate. You know there's starving children in India. And my grandmama really knew there were starving children in India. Well, I joined the Peace Corps after college almost 100% because of my great grandmother. And I say that because her Peace Corps experience, you know, she turned 70 in the Peace Corps. And her Peace Corps experience really infected my whole family, I think, with the idea that you could go into, you know, do something that many people in, in her town thought was crazy and, and, and was certainly outside of her comfort zone. Lillian Carter was a busy and important part of her son Jimmy's political campaigns for state senate, governor, and in 1976, president of the United States. She published two books during his presidency. One was a collection of letters that she had written her family from India. She was a, one of my best campaigners. My mother would go all over the country campaigning, telling people about me and, and so forth. So I think that her life emerged in a public way uh, that it wouldn't, it wouldn't have happened had my daddy lived because then she would pretty have, well have been confined to Plains, George. She was one of the most well-known spectators at the professional wrestling arena in Albany. The legend is that my grandfather was at the White House when Clinton was the president, and Jesse Ventura walked up to President Clinton, my grandfather, and without saying anything to President Clinton said, President Carter, I knew your mother so well. She was always in the stands when we were in Albany. We took turns, were made to take turns, going with Grandmama to the wrestling matches. And um, she may have been a little bitty up next to those, but her mouth was bigger than anybody else's in the entire auditorium. Her later years were spent at her home outside Plains, visiting with family and fishing. She died at the age of 85 and was buried beside her husband at Lebanon Church Cemetery. The mother of a president and a formidable leader in her own right, Lillian Gordy Carter set an example for all women with her determination to make the world a better place. She wanted us to know that, that we could do anything we wanted to do, and, and she was very adamant about that. I mean, that ability to live her life every single day was uh, an incredible thing that I admire, and I, I, I challenge anybody to find someone who, who had a fuller and, and, and more robust life than she did, because she certainly is a woman of achievement in that regard. <laughs>